Jesus. That's ridiculous. But still okay. So I went and saw Fast 7 last night, purely to see what they had done with Paul Walker since he had tragically died during production. I had heard that they had filmed about 80% of it, but it depended on what that 20 remaining percent was that would have made the film, like, from a production side, interesting. And to be honest, they actually did a pretty decent job, despite such a heavy loss. And I actually really enjoyed it. The, from a silly perspective, I actually enjoyed this movie just because of how ridiculous it was, and also the tribute to Paul Walker. Really, they actually break the fourth wall kind of with the ending. I think the ending is very well done for a send-off to him because Paul Walker was such an important part of this group, and they all were, as Van Diesel will say, a family. And I could believe it. These guys had such good chemistry together. They were such a good, tight-knit group. So it's a really good send-off to Paul. I think it was... I think it was, despite what they had and how limited they were, I think it was really well done. So as for the film, now if you thought that 5 and 6 were ridiculous, then you're going to be totally blown away by this because this film looks like it's on PCP. Unfortunately, James Wan really doesn't know how to direct action movies. He's done really good horror movies, but he's still new of action, and so unfortunately he sides with doing really quick cuts, really dynamic cameras. Basically, the camera never sits still, ever. And the cuts are like every half second, so it's kind of like watching a transporter or a Taken movie. It's just, it's just mind-numbingly stupid because of how over the top it is. And unfortunately, the film kind of suffers in terms of its authenticity. Now, I like these movies because of the stunts. Admittedly, they've gotten a little bit more CG over the years because of how ridiculous they are. But whenever they can, they try to do the scenes realistically with stunt work. And there are some pretty cool stunts done in this movie. The only unfortunate thing is, by doing the cuts so quickly, the authenticity of those scenes is ruined because of how ridiculous it is. And so, I feel that takes away a little bit from it. The only three problems I have with this movie is that Dom, in particular, suffers from current day Bruce Willis, John McClane syndrome. He's bloody fucking invincible. Literally. There's at least two times you're like, okay, you're invincible. The other thing is it suffers from I can't believe I'm going to say this, Pokemon love resuscitation. That happens. The third thing is The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, is not in this movie nowhere near enough. It's explained why, but it, it really sucks because he is the reason why I went and saw 5. I didn't see 4 because I thought 4 was stupid, but with 5 I got reinvigorated because of how awesome The Rock was in that movie. And so I was a bit upset that he wasn't in this film as much. And it's unfortunate when a film is this ridiculous and you don't have a character as magnetic with his personality and with his presence. Uh, the Rock is super cool dude, but the problem is when you don't have him and you have to rely off characters that are trying to put together a film that is already sort of broken because they've lost one of their cast members. Uh, I feel that if you had put The Rock in more, I would have. this film would have been more enjoyable, even though, not saying that it isn't. You're going to be going, oh my god, I can't believe they just did that throughout the entire movie. When you see it, you'll understand what I mean, how you really wanted The Rock to be there, especially when he appears at the beginning, and then when he returns, you're like, man, I wish he had been in the rest of this movie. The story itself is kind of bland, it's not anything different, and it's all about Jason Statham taking out their crew, and to get him, they team up with a very charismatic and underutilized Kurt Russell to find something that can track people over the planet, but in that attempt to get that thing, Jason Statham finds them anyway like three times, so... I don't know, it kind of seems pointless. I don't know why no one brought a gun with them. The stunts are ridiculous, the action sequences are ridiculous, the dialogue is ridiculous. That's the other thing too, there's a lot of melodramatic dialogue and it's really... I think you get more of a melodramaticism for any scene that Paul Walker does just because you know that he's gone, he's not coming back. So the melodramatic scenes kind of feel a little bit flat and it's kind of interesting because, well, really, you're into the ones with Paul Walker because of his death. But if you were to look at it from a perspective that he, if he didn't die, there's actually nothing interesting or new about any of these dialogue scenes. It's just the same repetitive stuff that we've seen before, but the only reason why it's different is because of the loss. It's another reason why a lot of people went and saw The Dark Knight, because of Heath Ledger, right? This was his last big major role. In the end, I still enjoy the movie, but I still feel that 5 was much more concrete, and 6 was even more enjoyable, and I didn't even like 6 really that much. My rating for Fast 7 is a 4 out of 7, which is funny because it's the fourth film I hated. It's stupid, dumb, action, fun, but you'll still enjoy it. 
But really, the reason why you're seeing it is for Paul Walker, and I don't blame you. And I, again, commend these guys for being able to finish the film despite such a heavy loss. Anyway, guys, I'm off to the Vancouver Fan Expo right now, so hopefully I'll be bringing back some more interesting posters, if I can fit them on the wall. Anyway, see you guys later. Please buckle down.